Hello, Alley Cats and you viewers. So today is part one of my June 2017 favorites. If you're new to the channel and don't know what favorites are, that's where I list everything I loved in the entertainment industry over the past couple of weeks. And I always split these into two parts because I always have way too many favorites for one human being. And I don't know how I do it, but somehow I manage it every single time. So let's just get down to it before I jibber jabber too much. The movies I've enjoyed over the last couple of weeks have all been pretty amazing. There's only been a couple of duds. If you'd like to see the written reviews for these films and see the films I don't mention in this particular video, go check out my blog, allycatgeekery.com, or follow me on Letterboxd or Mouth. But the first movie I really loved this month was Gattaca. This is my first time watching it and I adored it. This stars Ethan Hawke, Jude Law, and Uma Thurman. And it's about a man and he grows up in a society where basically everyone's parents have chosen their traits and made perfect children but he was born just because his parents loved each other so he has faults and he pretends to be this other man and he really wants to be an astronaut and go into space and it's just a really intriguing story it's very fast-paced and very fascinating the performances are excellent and I can't believe it took me this long to watch this classic sci-fi film that I believe is really underrated with a lot of people. The next film up is The Craft. This is a classic cult teen movie. It's about this girl who goes to a new school and she has powers. So she's basically a witch and doesn't really realize it. And she meets these three other girls who all claim to be witches as well. They form a coven and shenanigans happen and by shenanigans i mean some pretty dark shit it is really funny really sharp and caustic just like a lot of the cult classic films from that era were and it's just a lot of fun to see what these girls get up to and the consequences that arise from their actions and it's just something you need to watch if you haven't now next up is a film that i really adored but i know some people will find it utterly boring but that is a royal affair this is directed by Nikolai Arcel and stars Alicia Vikander and Mads Mikkelsen. And this follows Queen Caroline, played by Alicia Vikander. And she is married off to King Christian VII and becomes the Queen of Denmark. But King Christian VII has a terrible temper, he's a terrible husband, and she falls in love with their physician, Dr. Johann Struth, played by Mads Mikkelsen. Which is a fascinating tale of Caroline and Johann's affair and what happens because of it. I love the time period that it's set in. I need to do more research about Caroline Mathilde and King Christian VII and Johann Struess. But I love this film. I love the acting. I love the time period, the costumes, everything about this film just entranced me. The next film up should be no surprise to anyone, but I freaking adored Wonder Woman. It was just so good. It was so optimistic. It was so empowering to see a woman who was so strong and kind and powerful in a film. And I loved learning more about Diana Prince's background because admittedly, I didn't know a lot about Wonder Woman before this film. But now I'm really intrigued by her legacy and her myth. And I want to learn more about Diana Prince herself. So this film was fantastic. It lives up to the hype. And if you haven't seen it, go to the theater and watch it. It's so good. Next up is Blue Velvet. This is a film by David Lynch. And I just utterly adored this film. It stars Kyle MacLachlan, Isabella Rossellini, and Laura Dern. And it's just an amazing story. It's David Lynch weird, but I love David Lynch weirdness. And it's actually my favorite film of his. It tops Mulholland Drive in my opinion. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you do so because it's not as out there as Mulholland Drive. It's more accessible in my opinion. But it's still David Lynchian and I just freaking adore Blue Velvet. Another film following the color scheme is Blue Jasmine. And this is a film by Woody Allen that stars Kate Blanchett as a woman who has to go live with her sister in San Francisco because something tragic has happened to her husband and she is used to living a wealthy life. She's used to wearing designer clothes and going to parties and living in a big mansion and when she goes to San Francisco she has no money. She has to live with her sister in an apartment with her sister's two kids and she has to adjust to a new area, a new way of living and you can see how this has a mental and physical toll on Kate Blanchett's character Jasmine. And this is just such a fantastic film, just like most of Woody Allen's films are fantastic in my opinion. And Kate Blanchett is just such a powerhouse in this film. Next up, I finally, finally, finally saw Arrival. And when I first started watching this film, I wasn't super keen on it. But as the film went along and I started to realize more and more about what the plot was unraveling, I became hooked. This is such a smart science fiction film 
with the gut punch of a twist and Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner are fantastic in this film. I love their take on the whole alien mythology and it's just something that I think is classic and I'll definitely watch again and it's something that I think a lot of people will enjoy if you haven't seen it already. The next movie up is Ghost World. This was directed by Terry Zweigoff and stars Thor Birch and Scarlett Johansson along with Steve Buscemi. And this is about two teenage girls who have just graduated from high school and one day they decide to play a prank on a man named Seymour who is played by Steve Buscemi and the girl that's played by Thora Birch, Enid, feels really bad about playing this prank on Seymour so she develops a friendship with Seymour and this is just a quirky, offbeat, colorful film and at first you really despise the two teenage girls, they're bitchy, they seem entitled but then you start to unravel their personalities and see deeper into their cores and it's just a really smart movie and I really enjoyed it and this is a film that hasn't gotten a lot of buzz and just got released on Criterion Collection so hopefully this will raise more awareness about this film because it deserves it. Next up is It Comes at Night. I actually filmed a review for this so I'll have that linked on the screen but I really enjoyed it. And the last film was Zodiac. This is directed by David Fincher and of course focuses on the case of the Zodiac Killer. I am obsessed with serial killers, like I took forensics in high school and this was such an intriguing case to me back then and then watching this movie made me even more intrigued in the case and the performances are just outstanding. Jake Gyllenhaal, Robert Downey Jr., Mark Ruffalo, all amazing and even though this is a very long movie, over two and a half hours long, it felt like it flew by in the blink of an eye. It was so captivating and I could see myself watching this over and over again because it was that good and that compelling. As for TV, the only show I've been watching has been Penny Dreadful. I'm catching up on the last season finally because it took me forever and oh my gosh this show is so good. If you haven't seen Penny Dreadful and you like gothic horror, check this out because it has characters like Dorian Gray, it has Dr. Frankenstein, it includes werewolves and demonic possession and stuff like this. It's so fascinating. The characters are all fleshed out and pretty much all likable. You see their motivations and it's just such a beautiful show. I'm so sad that there are only three seasons of this show because it was so well done, so well produced, and Eva Green in particular was amazing as Vanessa Ives. Like, I just have such a huge girl crush on Eva Green, it's not even funny. The music I loved is listed in the description box down below, so give the songs a listen and let me know what you think. And for YouTube, a channel I've been obsessed with lately is Melbourne On My Mind. I adore her videos. If you're into books, check her channel out because every week she does a weekly wrap up of all the books she's read and then she gives recommendations for books. She discusses certain topics about books and I just love her personality. She's so funny and uncensored and warm and I just love Kirsty's personality. So if you're a book fan, check out Melbourne on the Mind. So that is it for my June favorites part one. Let me know what you've been enjoying so far down below in the comment box. Make sure to like the video if you liked it and if you like it share it because that helps my channel grow and also if you're not subscribed yet and you like what you see and heard hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell because that will alert you every time I upload a new video or start a new live stream. Everyone wins and it makes me happy and if you like my videos, it makes you happy. If you hate my videos, it makes you happy because you get to hate on me even more. So win, win, win for everyone. If you'd like to follow me on social media sites, check out my blog or anything like that, they're all listed down below in the description box. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. You're always my favorites. Always, 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 but while you're here, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you'll see my face floating over here in the near future. Click it and I'll sub you to my channel. Also make sure if you want to see the last video I uploaded to click that up here. If you want to watch a playlist of videos that you can watch over and over again, that will be down here as well sometime in the near future. I'm just going to go back and go back to my horrible dancing now, okay?